Linda Barch from the Bruce Company taking your calls at 270-9933. That's pretty. Isn't that a pretty plant? That's a delphinium. In that, so it's a perennial. It will come back year after year. They're a little touchy, but if you um, plant them, they're a really nice tall spike element in the, in the garden. Full sun. Full sun. Full sun is going to be the best, yes. Mm -hmm. And the other one that, that we started off with is another, uh, it's not quite as tall typically. That is a foxglove, and that's probably oh, 30 inches. And that plant is a perennial, but it's a, it's, it's a biennial, actually. So the first year you have just a plant and no, no flower stalk, and then the second year it develops a flower stalk. So you buy them like this and then let, you, let the seeds drop, and then you'll have to wait for another whole year for that mm. plant to bloom. All right, interesting. Yes. All right, let's go to the calls. We'll start with Suzanne in Madison. Hi, Suzanne. Suzanne, you there? My question? Yes, go ahead. When is the time to cut down my oriental poppies? They're through blooming. Mm -hmm. The seed pods have formed. When can I cut them down to the ground? You can cut the flower stalk down to the ground. You don't want to cut the remaining leaves down to the ground because that is, is basically something that you leave on all summer long. But the, the flower stalk, as soon as flower stalks start to look bad, deadhead those, get those out of the way. Leave the plants alone. Yes. All right, yes. Jimmy in Madison. Hi, Jimmy. Hello, Linda. Hi, Mark. Jimmy. I have a question about a blackhawk viburnum. Uh, it didn't fare too well over the winter. And the question is, is one half of it is questionable, the other half is doing okay. Okay. What do you fertilize it with? Do you use like a 10-10-10, or do you try to use a little more higher nitrogen type food on it? Okay, well, the portion that is not leafing out or not looking healthy, I would just remove that because it's, that always detracts from a plant. As far as fertilizing it, if 10-10-10 is all that you have, that's fine. I tend to use something that is like an osmocote or a slow-release material. So it's, it's fed a little bit more gradually because that 10 to 10, we've had enough water, so there shouldn't be any problem. But that nitrogen is all urea, so it is released immediately. Okay, so a little time release. Mm -hmm. I, it, it's a preference that I have. The, the 10 to 10 is fine because it has phosphorus for root development, and the potassium is used by the plant also. Okay, Agnes in Middleton. Hi, Agnes. Hi. Hi. Which question? Oh, I have a Christmas cactus. It grooms about three times a year, and now it's drying up the way it looks, so I don't know if I water too much or not. And well, then I have a Christmas, something like the Christmas tree, I don't know what it's called. The branches are way out. Uh -huh. There's two rows that are fine and uh, three rows that are falling off the branches. Okay. So, the Christmas cactus, boy, if, Agnes, if you've gotten it to bloom three times a year, you w must have been doing something fabulous. If it, if it is getting crispy yeah. uh, and you're, not, you're watering as you normally are, sometimes they develop a, a root rot, unfortunately. So if, if there are just sections of it that are, are bad, I would prune that off, but otherwise, hopefully, I'd tip it out of, the, out of the pot and see what that root system looks like. I'm concerned that it might have developed a root rot. And the Christmas tree-like plant, I think she's talking a Norfolk pine, and they can develop spider mites, but they cast off those lower, lower branches many times also. But use the white paper test where you check for spider mites, where you tap the foliage and if little pieces of pepper drop onto the paper, then you have to treat for spider bites. And how do you do that? There's an, a miticide that you can purchase, or like neem oil is a, is a good product to okay. use. All right, Mary in Reedsburg. Hi, Mary. Hi. Hi. Which question? Oh, okay, Linda, I have geraniums and petunias, and I've had so many different people tell me the way you pick off the dead ones. On the geraniums, you just pick out the dead ones, or do you take out the top? And as well as on the petunias. You just pick out the dead ones and snip off the top. I'm very confused over those. <laughs> okay, well, when you say just snip off the top, on the geranium, what will happen is the center um, petals will um, look bad first. So if you want as many flowers as possible, you can pick that little center out. Some people are impatient and they don't want to be going back twice. Then mm -hmm. they just cut the whole stalk off. And petunias, just I would just say just the dead, dead flowers, unless it starts to get leggy. Okay. Then you can prune it a whole section out and let it start to um, regrow at the base. But you're going to have to wait a while for flowers to re redevelop. Okay. And all this rain we're having, the, the lawns are getting long. The lawns are getting long. And that it, so if you haven't been able to mow it because it's t mow it up very high and then two days later mow it down again or, or stay on it because um, mowing in really, really short after you're taking, you're taking off more than half the blade, it's going to yellow and it's going to slow it down. So, well, get monsoon in, season. Getting in between the rain. Yeah. All right, Linda, thanks. If you're on the line, stay there. Linda will take your call off the air. We'll see you next week. Yes. We'll be right back with a final check of your forecast.